Variables are a very important part of coding. Uh, it really just gives us the ability to store some value and put a name on it and then recall that value over and over again using that name that we've given it. Um, and for the most part, even though there's several different data types in uh, processing, we're going to be using mainly four. You're going to want to store whole numbers and you'll use an int for that. You're going to want to store decimal numbers or things that have uh, you know stuff to the right of the decimal place and you're going to use the word, keyword float for that. Um, occasionally you'll want to tr have true false values. The, the keyword for that is boolean, the data type that is available. And as we get into keyboard interactions, the char char is going to be an important data type for us as we look at which key we want to associate with which action, basically. Um, but let's look at what we can actually do with these in processing with some interactive graphics. So for my first example here, I've just got a simple uh, group of four variables. All of them are of type int, or they're whole numbers, therefore. And I'm basically just storing some xy pairs. Um, I'm using those xy pairs down here with my line command to draw a straight line between those xy pairs. Um, and I'll leave it to you to pause the video if you want to copy this code into your own uh, copy of processing on your machine. But if I hit run, I get a straight line, which is uh, might not be a very big deal. But if I now wanted to, say, join a, a second line and have a, a, a point in common, I could uh, do that a little more efficiently than if I was just coding the numbers uh, straight up. I could just do, let's see here, uh, I don't know, um, I feel like doing 500, great, and I feel like having this int be, uh, excuse me, x3, and I don't know, I'll do 250, great. Okay, now if I uh, come down here and create a second line command, I can now uh, run this again and I get two lines with one point in common because I tracked those variables. For my second example here, let's see how we can combine these user variables that I've got up here at the top with some of the system variables. In this case, the mouse x and the mouse y variables that track the mouse position on the screen. If I combine them and simply draw a line in between the x coordinates that are being tracked with the mouse and my user defined static uh, x y pairs, I can get actually some uh, pretty interesting interaction as the sh as the line kind of follows my mouse, um, and I can c create some variations on this too if I just simply change up where my uh, background command is. If I do it once at the beginning rather than doing it every time through the draw loop, I can actually um, have this uh, create some. Uh, quite beautiful shapes as I track this in kind of uh, three dimensions against it feels kind of like these uh, ethereal shapes as I move the mouse around here um, and then if I want to uh, go back to move my background back I can actually um, have two lines that are tracking the, the mouse but track it from different endpoints so if I go back to my X and Y one pair uh, and then track the other end of it with the mouse X and mouse Y I can have a line that's static on the ends, but kind of bends in the middle and follows the mouse. Next, let me show you how you can use these system variables, this mouse x and mouse y, to actually draw things kind of in a relative position to the mouse coordinates. So what I'm doing here is rather than talking about uh, user variables that are absolute pixel positions on the screen, I'm talking about relative pixel positions to the mouse coordinates, and then I'm adding those to my uh, to my system variables for mouse x and mouse y to get things that are relative in position to the mouse. So as I draw this shape, you see how it kind of follows the mouse, and that's because it's constantly updating every time I move the mouse around the screen. Um, I can get that varied effect as well if I just simply change where my background command happens, move it to the setup, I get that, that kind of painting effect that I had before. Uh, and I know it's not really three-dimensional, but what ha what's happening is the slower you move your mouse, the more compact the lines are versus when you move it quicker, they're getting further apart and it gives it this kind of three-dimensional effect. Lastly, I'm a big fan of randomizing variables. So uh, one of the things I've done here, I've, I'm building on the last example that I showed you where it was the, the line was following the mouse here, um, but I've converted these coordinates, these user uh, variables that I've defined up here to floats because uh, I want to actually add a random value. So remember this draw command is actually happening every time we cycle through the frame. So because the frame rate is 30 frames a second, it's happening 30 times a second. And we can actually populate our variables with a new, slightly different value each time we go through that frame. Uh, that's effectively what these random 
uh, generators are doing here basically I'm changing those XY values every time through the draw loop and that just gives it a little bit of uh, extra animation so if as I play this you see that the line kind of dances so randomization can be an actually a very useful tool for creating various animation effects so that's four examples of using variables with interactive graphics and processing and hopefully that gives you a taste of how useful variables are going to be going forward